Welcome to the Chasing Something podcast with me, Lorinda Pretorius. Here we get real and raw about the struggles and the joys of being a young adult following Jesus in a post-Christian world. Join me as I engage in tough, controversial, and highly relevant conversations to enable you to thrive in your chase. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to take a few seconds to tell you about the More Gathering by my favorite ministry, Moral Revolution. This gathering or conference is two days from the 17th to the 18th of July 2020. Um, It will be online and it's specifically for Jesus loving women. Um, It's called the More Gathering because the motto is you are more than your past, you are more than your body, and you are more than enough. And they'll share incredible testimonies of people overcoming sexual trauma, body image issues, pornography addiction, and failures. I just really want to encourage you um, to buy a ticket to this gathering because it will be so life-giving and life-changing. There will be a link in the description where you can buy your ticket. Without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Hi beautiful people, Um, welcome to today's episode. So today we have something a little bit different. Um, On Sunday I made this post on Instagram about not being okay and um, kind of a bunch of emotional struggles that I've been facing recently. And instead of um, sticking to the podcast schedule based on the response I got on that post, I realized that um, it would be a really good idea to take a second and have a conversation about um, kind of mental health and Christianity or this idea that as Christians it sh- we should always be okay and we should always see the bright side and um, yeah just the pressure that comes with being someone who shares their life on social media um, especially as a Christian and even as a woman and so I brought my friend Deborah, who is beautiful and wonderful and such a <laughs> great facilitator to kind of facilitate this conversation for me um and so yeah this will be a little bit different but I do hope that you enjoy this and that you can take something away from this conversation so Debs do you want to say anything I mean you've been on here before but you can introduce yourself again (laughs) Well, um, hi. Uh, yes, I have been here before. I am very, very blessed to be here again. Um, I am Deborah. So, what's up? I'm going to be doing this thing. Uh, a <laughs> little bit daunting for me because I'm not good at the whole conversation thing, as great as Lorinda is. But um, such a lie. Yeah, like she said. Um, <laughs> I beg to differ, but. Uh, yeah, basically we had a very fruitful and honest conversation um, about some things before she uh, posted that, um, before she made that post, and yeah, I think it was a really good thing that you did that, and um, I haven't like gone through all the responses yet, so I'm not 100% on par with that, but um, yeah, I guess like the main question is like, why did you choose to share something so personal on Instagram? That's the real question, isn't it? <laughs> um, mm. <laughs> it's interesting because before I shared it, I, I was thinking like about the caption. Like, should I put in the caption, this is not for attention? Like, should I? Because um, mm. I think a lot of times when people share things like that on Instagram, there, there can be this idea that this is for attention and that honestly was not my goal. I I think for me, my whole goal with not only my Instagram, but all my 
like social media platforms and like the podcast, the, my blog, everything like that is to create safe spaces where we can just be honest about where we're at, you know? Um, mm. Because if we can't admit what we're actually struggling with and we can't actually um, show other people our brokenness or show Jesus our brokenness, he can't meet us where we're at, you know? Because he doesn't meet us where mm. we think we are or where we think we should be. He meets us right there where we are in the hurt, in yeah, whatever we're going through. Um, and I just kind of felt like if I want to create the space, um, I need to also be the one um, who shares that, you know? Like if people... and. I mean, you obviously have the risk of people thinking, oh, this is just for um, attention. And I'm sure there are people who do feel that way. But for the few people that, like, really honored my vulnerability, um, I guess that's why I did it. Yeah, just to, especially because, I mean, you know this, we all know this. Instagram is such a place, like, it's such a highlight reel type of, um, social media where I mean now um, more people definitely share a little bit more of their real lives and yeah it's also hard to find the balance between like oh I want to be vulnerable and I want to show you that it's not always okay without actually in a way exploiting myself and like because mm. it's a bunch of people that you don't know so I mean you don't necessarily want to share every I mean mo most people on Instagram don't know me I I think people still think they do because that's the nature of social media mm. it's so weird but they don't you know yeah like I think um when I saw that post it's it's a bit different for me because I do know you personally and um I see the kind of person you are online um but like I don't know, sometimes I always just like wonder if you sort of feel pressured to constantly be happy or like in a really good state of mind the entire time. You're, you're a strong person, that you're an extremely happy person the entire time, especially on social media as an influencer. I mean, it's really funny when you say influencer because like... I don't think of four. Th <laughs> you are an influencer. Four thousand people is not that much in the bigger scale of like Instagram and the Kardashians or whatever. But I guess that's true. I mean, four thousand people can. <laughs> it's definitely more than my family. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like if you actually think about, like imagine yeah, four thousand people standing in front of you. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think as much as I would like for there to not be pressure, there definitely is. And I think it's not just because of Instagram. I think it's also like, kind of specifically, because I am kind of like a Christian influencer. And also because I am someone who... I mean, I would describe myself as bold, but I know a bunch of other people would also kind of describe me as bold and like standing up for a lot of things. And I I think for some reason, um, which is pretty interesting because I recently recorded an episode on toxic masculinity and it kind of, kind of came down to the same thing that we have this misunderstanding of what strength is. And I think for a lot of people it like it doesn't suit their narrative if I'm not doing great. And that's also interesting because obviously before I posted mm -hmm. it, so for those who don't know, Deborah is like my personal editor slash assistant that I don't have money to pay. So that's why you should all listen so I can get money so I can pay her. <laughs> um, and <laughs> before, I, so usually before I post, I send her the stuff that I'm going to post. And originally that post was going to say, um, I'm not okay. And that's all right. Um, 
And she actually told me that she thinks it's better for me to take out the and I'm and that's all right part because of a previous conversation we've had where I said, well, I feel like a lot of times I say that I'm not okay, but people don't hear me. Or they hear it, but it doesn't register. And like the response is always, oh, but you're doing all these great things. Like, oh, but we love you. But it's not like, a, oh, I love you and I'm here for you. What do you need? It's like, oh, but you're amazing. And not that I don't like compliments, people. That's great. Give me compliments. <laughs> but mm -hmm. sometimes when you're just like, I'm not doing great. You just want someone or you want people to honor that by saying, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Like, can I pray for you? If you need someone, I'm here. Instead of like saying, okay, but I mean, you're like doing all these other things or like, but I love how you're still standing up for that or, you know, just like not registering. And I, like I said, I think that is also because that doesn't suit the narrative of a strong person. And then when it comes to Christianity, I think so many mm -hmm. times we're afraid to be to be not okay. Because I think we underestimate Jesus. You know, like we underestimate the humanness that, mm -hmm. um, or how he was completely human and how he experienced all these things. And, um, I mean, it's actually funny because now that I think about it, it's like Jesus on the cross and he was so traumatized by like life that he's like, my God, why have, why have you forsaken me? He wasn't like, oh God, why have you forsaken me? But at least you're still so good. Yes, love dying on this cross. Amen. <laughs> that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not, and I yeah, think there's true. a lot of pressure, and I definitely mm -hmm. feel this because, um, like I said, with the original message, it was a like my caption was a lot more like, oh, but that's okay, and like, but God is still good, and you know what? I I believe God is good. Like even when I'm at my worst, I have no doubt that God is good because I just have experienced it in such a deep way that I can never unknow that. Um. And so I don't, but I feel this mm. pressure to have to mention it because otherwise I'm not going to be Christian enough. Otherwise people are going to be like, oh yeah, but God is still good. And you can actually see that in the comments. Like a lot of people are like that, um, which I also get wow. because I think I'm like that too um, sometimes. And it's like, oh yeah, I feel your struggle, but like God is good. And yes, God is good, but that's not what I need right now. Right, Like right now, if you want to, say God is good, maybe you should just pray for me. Like, maybe you should just, instead of saying, like, oh, God will comfort you, maybe you should just pray for God to comfort me in that second, you know? Um, mm. Yeah, it's mm. it's really <laughs> the expectation, and I think I'm also aware, right, that a lot of the expectation is also that I put on myself, too, Like, I'm not just blaming other people because that's just not the reality. Because you also allow expectation to influence you. You know, you get a choice. And um, mm. I think because I have a history of being someone that is kind of unpopular, <laughs> um, I guess with, mm. like, having very strong opinions, of course you get a lot of opposition and unfortunately in the world i mean i don't want to i'm not really a feminist or anything but i have seen how just because i'm a woman certain things that i say upset people even more than when a guy would say that um mm. and like me not giving in or changing my opinion just based on like someone else's opinion can really um Yeah, it doesn't make people very happy. And I think that definitely also contributes to it. Because it's this like, oh, I have to be this strong woman. Because otherwise, like, I can see you want to walk over me. And I won't let you do that. So I can't show you that I am not doing great. Like, all those, like, especially when it comes to, like, hate mail or, like, what? 
I'm saying hate mail as if I receive mail, but like <laughs> hate DMs or death threats or whatever. Like it's not great to admit, oh my gosh, like after the 10th or 15th hate message, like it doesn't feel good, you know, like it's not and it doesn't mean that God isn't good or that I'm not finding my identity in God, but like and of course you yeah, certain things you can ignore, but some things you can't ignore. And so it's just really hard to be like, oh, I'm this, I'm trying to be this person standing up for all these things. But then like, yeah, this still gets to me because of course, you know, I'm still human. Mm. Sure. Like, I know for me, I've definitely felt that pressure to, you know, always be happy, um, especially online. Um, but of course, I'm not doing as much as you are. So mm. I've had less pressure. Um, what are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. Well, things. I do not have 4000 followers. So <laughs> let's start there. Um, but I, I really am not doing as much as you You're running a blog, a podcast and, and your Instagram is dedicated to all that stuff as well, which is so incredible. Um, I deleted my blog and stuff. So it's a bit different. Um, but yeah, like I definitely felt that pressure as well because like I never want people to engage with me whether it's in person or online um, and like feel upset or just like not uplifted even if it's in a like a small way. Um, and that's mainly because mm. my heart is towards trying to make some kind of contribution in the lives of the people I meet because I think a lot of the time... Um, we all have something that we need. We all have something that we're praying for, whether you're a Christian or not, you know, there's always something that you you want in life, right? No one is completely satisfied. Um, In the sense, I'm not saying like completely satisfied in the sense that, I don't know how to phrase this, (laughs) but there's always something we need, right? Basically. Um, And the thing is, yeah, a lot of the time we're waiting for the answers to our prayers and like these, quote unquote big events or big futures where like God's voice is like booming from the clouds, you know. But oftentimes it's in the quiet conversation and the daily chats that we have with people that actually hold a lot of what God is trying to say to us. So um for me when I feel that pressure to constantly be happy and to constantly say the right things, I guess it's just me trying to make sure that I don't waste those opportunities when God gives me a chance to communicate with someone. Um, and the reason that's actually not a good thing is because I understand that God does, God understands that I'm not perfect. And at the end of the day, it's really not up to us how things mm. turn out, but it's our willingness to, you know, fall right in the middle of God's will and for God to literally just do the rest. Um, but yeah, like, yeah. with that, I want to ask, um, why do you think that there is, a, like, an extra pressure on Christians, especially, and Christian influencers, to always keep up that level of positive, almost, like, tries to not focus on the realities of the pains that come with living on Earth? So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's because we doubt the power of God. Mm. And I think it's because we have this, like, we want to represent God, but not for who he is, Mm. you know? Like, we have this thing, like, oh, I want people to know Jesus because knowing Jesus is the best thing Mm. in my life. So, but I can't share, like, that's a thing about faith and the faith thing about like having a relationship with Jesus is yes we have the Bible which is beautiful and wonderful and we need to read it and we have history and there's even historical proof that Jesus existed that he died and that he was resurrected those things are true but the reality is that believing in Jesus is an experience um and so actually like if you take all the facts and everything away like you can't take that experience away from Mm. someone. But you also can't properly share that experience. Like it is, of course there are testimonies and that is a part. Um, But I think we're afraid that, or we think that we have the responsibility to make Jesus look better than he is. 
as if he's not already amazing, you know? Mm. Um, because it's this thing of, oh, you're living in the world, you're getting drunk every night, and whatever you're doing, and, like, you're unhappy, but come to Jesus because this is life. Like, this is life in abundance. But we struggle to share that, oh, this life in abundance comes with a whole lot of persecution, yeah. comes with a lot of temptation, comes a lot with a lot of struggle, and, like... Don't get me wrong, and again, like, here's me justifying what I'm saying right now, is that I won't trade this life for anything. Mm-hmm. I would never go back to my life before Jesus. Never. Because it was, and you know what? It also had good times, but I did not know life. I was in bondage. Um, and this is true freedom, but there is... it. Like I said, it comes with a lot of struggles, and this morning I actually watched a video where Jackie Hill Perry was talking to someone, having this conversation about um, how, like, we serve a who was tempted. Mm. He was tempted, but he didn't give in. And he had struggles. And he, I mean, when we look at, at the whole story of the cross, I think we romanticize it because it's the beginning of, like, it's the core of Christianity and you're just so used to mm. hearing it. But I mean... Just put yourself in a position where you know you're going to die for people who literally hate you, firstly. Secondly, your best friend, because I think it's pretty fair to say that Peter was one of Jesus' best friends, in his moment of need and pain, literally denied that he knew him. And as someone who had, like, has had a similar experience, I wasn't serving Jesus so like I mean I was standing up for different things but like having being in a situation where I was confronted by like my enemies and like all the people who were my friends they were quiet that is some horrible traumatic Mm. (laughs) situations you know like it is it's not fun and he he went through all of that. And I mean, yes, he knew God was good, but it was, he wasn't like, oh, yay, I'm just loving this emotional trauma I'm experiencing right now. Can't wait. Or like, I think we also definitely confuse joy and happiness. And we have this idea that God promises us happiness. And I'm not saying that God does not want you to be happy, but I'm saying that he promises us joy, not happiness, because happiness is a fleeting yeah. emotion. But joy ultimately as a discipline and a way of looking yeah. at life and knowing no matter how dark it is right now, I will never give up because there's a greater hope even when I mm. can't see it. And it's living in, th- in that way because I always, like, I use Paul a lot because I love Paul. He's, like, my inspiration. I'm like, do you think Paul was there in prison almost dying ten times, being hit by people who hate him and stoned? Like, he wasn't like oh my gosh, just hit me again. This is so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no. He still had joy. He was like, he knew, I have a bigger hope. Jesus, if I have to suffer for you, I will because you are the king of my life and I will praise you because even though these people are hurting me, you are good. But that's a different, like that's completely different to being like, oh yeah, amazing, loving, living my best stoning life right now it's not the same yeah i also think like especially for christians and christian influences and influencers in terms of like keeping up that level of of positivity um i think we also we're also very aware of the fact that god expects the best from us in all the ways we can bring the kingdom to earth but the thing is, we forget that he expects the best from mm. us as in human beings. And with this, I'm saying, yeah. like, human beings are not people who have it all together. And it's important for us to realize this in order for us to rely on God to carry out his work, you know, even through our brokenness. When God asks us to do something, it's important that we understand it's God asking us. It's complete perfection asking imperfection to fulfill something you know (laughs) like we forget that we see the god part we see you know god and his like sovereignty and everything we're like okay god is asking me but like 
does that mean I have to literally be perfect for him to to use me? And that's that's not the point. The point is is your willingness, you know? Um, like are you on board? Yeah. All God asks from us is our is our yes, you know. Um, in terms of mm. fulfilling his will. He's not looking for that perfectness. So um I just made up a word. Perfectness. My gosh, I need to go back to university. Perfection. Um <laughs> <laughs> Be like Shakespeare. <laughs> Just create your own words. Who cares? Yes, you should quote me. Yeah. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there shouldn't be that extra pressure as in, you know, I have to have it together in order for this to work. I have to have it together in order for God to do what he needs to do. God can do what he needs to do without you, to be very mm. honest. Um, but he chooses you <laughs> because he loves you. And he, <laughs> this is so true, and he understands yeah. that your part is just as important, you know. Like, I almost want to just be like, yeah. all the broken people should just be excited. You know, you're the perfect candidates for the work of God. Because, like, that's <laughs> essentially what God wants from us. He wants that honesty for us to realize that we can't do this without him. But we can do this with him, you know? Yeah. I think it's kind of funny that we feel pressured to be perfect. As if God is not the one who sees every Like, he sees every part of us you know like he isn't exactly. living in this illusion that oh my gosh mm. you need to be perfect for me to use you he's like i see that struggle i see that habitual sin <laughs> right here i see, <laughs> i see it you With know but yes. <laughs> but come here mm. <laughs> just come here <laughs> Just, just say yes, and then we'll, exactly. we'll figure it out, okay? And it's as if we, yeah, like, we feel like we should mm-hmm. still put this mask on in front of Jesus, like, yeah, no, but that doesn't exist. What hab- mm. what habitual sin? You're, no. Man, you're blind. <laughs> but now yeah. with that, you know, that thing of keeping up um, our idea of, like, being perfect in front of Christ... Do you feel like, and I'm going to make this personal to you, do you feel like you are qualified or should be qualified to minister to people if you are basically a human being, just as everyone else is, going through (laughs) struggles in life and stuff? Do you feel like you have to have it together in order to deliver what God wants you to deliver? I don't think you have to have it all together, but I do think, right? Like, I'm aware that when the Bible speaks about like pastors or people in leadership, there is a higher standard, which I get, right? Mm. Not that they're perfect, but like yes. you can't um, preach something that you're not walking out. And so I don't think that me having mm. some like, issues with my past, mental health issues, whatever you want to call it, I don't think that means that I am unqualified to minister to people because firstly, I believe the Holy Spirit has qualified me and that's all I need. And like he said, like if I allow Jesus to speak through Mm. me, it really doesn't even matter what I'm going through. But I think because there's a bigger responsibility on people with a platform, whatever that looks like and however big that is, Um, I believe that if you're honest with your struggle, Mm. I don't mind if you're struggling, but if you're hiding it or pretending that it's not an issue and I know you're not dealing with that, I don't trust you. Does that make sense? Like, that's just how I personally view people that I listen to. If they can come to me and be like, or share me, say like, this has been an issue in my past and like, sometimes I'm still like struggling with this, but I know this, I'm aware of it, and I'm dealing with it, with God, you know, then I really don't mind, um, even if you speak about that issue, because I know the place that you're coming from, you're coming from a place of humility, but I think a lot of times, especially when we hide it, right, there definitely comes this pride and hypocrisy, um, because then you're actually trying to You're afraid that people will find out that you're struggling. So now you're speaking out more about it or you're like um, being really hypocritical or 
even harsh on people dealing with certain struggles because of your own insecurity. And so I definitely think in that sense, honesty and vulnerability is so key. Not that I mm. think that you owe it to every single person you speak to to like go in depth and like unpack every single mm. thing that you're going through, but to have the awareness to mention the things that you are struggling mm. with, especially if you feel like you should say a, something about the thing that you're struggling with. Like, say I'm going through this or I am going through this right now, and obviously we're doing this podcast, so that would be very ironic. Like, if I'm doing a podcast on, like, mental health or whatever, and I'm like, no, but, like, I've never experienced this. Mm. What? <laughs> Not being okay? Like, do you know Jesus? Um, Like, that would just... <laughs> but I think mm. actually bringing in that authenticity and vulnerability mm. kind of strengthens even... Strengthens your ministry and even um, strengthens your trust or the trust that people have in you because they can see that you're not mm. trying to be perfect yes. or at least maybe you are trying to be perfect but you know you're not so <laughs> you can be like yeah this is a struggle but i also think that as much as i mm. believe that um this whole new phenomenon of cancel culture has definitely changed Kind of, I wouldn't say it changed my view on it, but I think it has changed a lot of people's views on it. Because now, I mean, it's especially if you're like starting your ministry online, it's mm. it's in a way very daunting because it's like, oh, one person decides you're this uh, ist or a bic, <laughs> you know, like sex ist or like whatever transphobic or like you do, and then mm. you're some then it's like oh okay well <laughs> bye bye yeah. never again oh you did good things in your shame no one cares <laughs> so it's yeah. like it is a little bit daunting definitely um mm. to then be vulnerable especially because a lot of times i think people don't allow us to grow or to learn they also have this they don't they're like oh you don't need to be perfect but if you do something wrong bye <laughs> and you now never again i don't know it's very it's a very weird time to be alive it definitely is um and i think more than ever the message of christ needs to be known you know by everyone and um that's not something we should ever shy yeah. away from um but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, whether you're a, a Christian, a current Christian influencer, a non-religious person, um, whatever you do in life, we all desire that companionship and that friendship and that help and that deep and extremely wide um, that becomes the reason we live our lives, you know? And essentially, for mm -hmm. Christians, we understand that this is Jesus. Um, but what would you say, um, like, what, what what does it mean to invite Jesus into us, you know, into our brokenness in order to help us um, to live the best lives that we can? Yeah, I think that's, that's something I'm working on, too, is figuring out, like, what does it mean to bring Jesus into all these things? And, I mean, I think a few things is firstly being honest with yourself about where you're at and then really praying about it and like not to be like all oh, christianese but like really i mean it's one thing to be like oh i'm struggling with this which is actually firstly a pretty big step sometimes but then i mean yes jesus knows everything you're thinking and saying but he still wants you to um deliberately come to him and be like jesus i am struggling with this like how like i need you how can i how can i overcome this and i think if we spent more time in god's presence we would realize that he empowers us to overcome everything um and so i think we should not doubt his power or 
a simple prayer like Jesus, search my heart, show me the things that are like um, keeping me away from you because he will show you. But I think if you want to take it a step further, um, talking with people who love Jesus and who can support you in prayer who you can who can speak truth into it because a lot of times God can speak to us through the Bible or just like you can hear God or something but a lot of times you also use as people and I think we shouldn't underestimate um the power of community and like speaking with a friend and being like hey like I'm really struggling with this and like I have invited Jesus into it but like I don't know what to do they can pray for you. They can just um, offer some words of comfort and wisdom. And if that's not enough, I just posted something on Instagram, I think, last night. And basically, I was like, everybody should go to therapy. And like, honestly, I believe this. If you, obviously not everyone can afford it. But like, if you can afford it, and you are going through something, go to therapy And you know what? In your session, be like, Jesus, come sit with me on this couch talking to this strange lady. What? (laughs) And yes, like, help me. I'm actually starting therapy this week. Um, It's narrative therapy, which is really cool. It's an alternative therapy. And I'll put the link in the description because I actually did a short course in it and I would probably recommend it to anyone and everyone. It's like one of the few therapies that has actually successfully treated people with schizophrenia. And it's this specific place um, with the their narrative therapy. It's, um, it's a Christian, like it's a, not a church, but it's a Christian organization. So firstly, I think that is great if you can, to get a Christian therapist. But this narrative therapy is so... I don't I don't think it's actually the person who found it was Christian, but it's so biblical because it's like... It's about how the fact that, like, your life is a story. And, like, if you want to change the story, if you want to change the narrative, you need to change the way you see yourself. And you need to change the way you see um, your problems. And it's just, it's such an incredible therapy. And it's, honestly, the therapist in this therapy is a lot more of a facilitator than anything else. It's, they never tell you what you're supposed to do, or they never give you the answer, which can be pretty frustrating. But they just keep asking you questions and suggesting things until you realize what, what is with holding you from seeing yourself or whatever you're going through in the way that you wanted to. Um, yeah, and I just think that we need to really take away the stigma um, that therapy is not okay. And I, I think it's pretty funny because um, I was talking to my dad about going to therapy because um, uh, I'm lucky enough that he will now sponsor it. <laughs> but we first had, like, a small fight about it, because I mentioned therapy last year, and he was like, no, but, like, you don't need that. And I was like, what are you saying? Like, you don't tell people don't go to the, um, I don't know, doctor or dentist or what. Like, people don't just go when they're actually falling apart. Sometimes... You just go and you realize, because you have a small, like your toe is sore or something, and then you realize, oh, if I treat this now, then I won't lose my foot in five years. So maybe I should just do this. Because trauma is also different than we think, you know? We always think, oh, when someone is raped or like almost died or their par- they lost a parent or a sibling, like that's the only thing that counts as trauma. But that's not true. Like psychologically, when you're a child, a lot of things can register in your mind as traumatic. I know my mom read this book and she um, shared this example where she was like, actually for a lot of children... If their parents or like mom is speaking on the phone and they're like freaking out the child and you don't give them attention, um, that can lead to them 
of feeling like they're not good enough or um, the, that can lead to abandonment issues, which are like, hello, you can't give your... I'm not saying you should give your child attention the whole time. Like, listen, I don't know. Parenthood is a whole nother thing that I'm like, lucky I don't have to worry about in the near future. But the point is just that who would have thought that you not giving your child attention in that one second would lead to these huge abandonment issues? Which that person who, like if the child grows up, they might see the consequences of abandonment issues and they'll know, oh, I have abandonment issues if they're pretty self-aware or anything. But they also don't remember that time. You know, like, they can't be like, oh, I remember when I was three, my mom was speaking to my aunt, and I was crying, and she didn't even look at me. No, you don't remember it, because it's in your subconscious, and therapy is just a space that facilitates you working through your own things, because we all have childhood trauma. Like, no one has a perfect childhood. You are just kidding yourself. <laughs> And if you do, I'm so happy for you. Yay. <laughs> Can't relate. <laughs> yes, what's that like? Please tell us. <laughs> yeah, so I just think that that stigma should just go away. Like, if you can't afford it, go to therapy. If you can't afford it, get friends who are studying psychology or watch Caroline Leaf. She has a book. She has some great podcasts. She has some YouTube videos. Mm. There's a lot of things that are not necessarily going to therapy, but therapeutic exercises that you can also do. I just, yeah, it's so great because uh, we essentially breaking the stigma around Christianity and mental health is just understanding that help is a good thing and help is out there in so many different ways. Like you've mentioned through therapy, mm. um, for you, it could literally just be through watching a sermon on YouTube, which there are so many, so many churches you can literally just attend now, um, especially during lockdown and whatnot. Um, all this stuff is it's yeah. so easy to know. Um, like my personal favorites, um, Vu Church, Elevation Church, Transformation Church. Um, I know Lauren likes Bridgetown, and I love my own church. So there's so many, there's so many um, yeah, so places much. that you can get the word of God in and get messages that speak to your situation. And there are people who are out there who care for you and whatnot. And reaching out is not, a, it's not a weak thing. And um, essentially God puts all these things in place so that we do become stronger and that we do it together and not alone. Um, I think that's also a very, very important thing, but um yeah, otherwise, I think it was super great. Um, again, still a little bit daunting because <laughs> I was like, oh, I have to get all these questions right. <laughs> I have to make sure this flow is great. Um, so apologies if my if my flow was, was a bit, like, tacky. But, um, yes, this was, I don't know, this definitely blessed me to be able to, to talk to you about this, Lorinda. So thank you so much. Thank you for being willing to facilitate this conversation. I think um, it was, I think it was therapeutic for me, <laughs> and I hope that people can get something out of it. Um, but before yes. we end, I just want to say that if you, I will put this link in the description. But before you like go on with your day after you've listened to this, you need to go listen to the song um, "You Will Be Found." which is part of a musical called Dear Evan Hansen, and it's about a guy who commits suicide. Um, and then his friend, who was also really depressed, so it's like this, I think, All the Bright Places, that movie is kind of similar. So there's this boy, he's kind of depressed. Depressed. Another boy, like, becomes his friend, helps him out of this depression, then the one who helps him actually commits suicide. And... This whole song is about, you know, like when you're feeling alone and you're not okay, reach out because someone cares. Mm. I'm not going to say the whole world cares because the world is crazy and people are doing something. Yeah. But someone cares. Someone cares. And if you reach out your hand, like if you just like take that step and reach out, someone will reach back. And mm. you're 
you're just never alone in this. You are never. There is always someone who cares and who wants to listen. And like, I think there was this um, post that went around recently and it's pretty sad, but it said something like, I'd much rather listen to your issues than your eulogy. And it's the same thing. Like, please don't be afraid to overshare or whatever and if someone's like hey i'm sorry i'm busy like i need this right now (laughs) like Mm -hmm. sometimes you also need to be assertive and i know when you are in a really bad place sometimes that can be the hardest thing and um we obviously also don't always know where people are so we might say oh I'm busy can I call you later and you might need it right now but I want to encourage you that if you're in a a really difficult um, position like don't give up until you have spoken to someone even if you have Mm. to call that person five times Um, Mm. because I promise you that person would also much rather give up everything and listen to you right now then they would listen to your eulogy. That's just the truth. Yeah, I think everyone just needs to realize that their life is just so precious. Um, No person is better than the other. Yeah, check up on your strong friends, honestly. Check up on the people that very rarely say that they have issues because they also matter as well. And sometimes they may be, you know, putting up a a front that everything is all right. But you can literally be that person to to be there for them. Um, Check check up on your friends. um, Check up on your family. Check up on as many people as you can. All the people that you know. Don't ever... um, look over those small things you know look over those things where people say like in your post um i'm not okay but that's all right don't look over those things um it's a very difficult thing for people to admit that they're not fine but otherwise stay at home and stay hydrated (laughs) (laughs) yeah um just one last thing is especially now um so psychologically when you go through a big changes three months in you hit a low and it's been approximately three months of like lockdown and so it isn't surprising that i'm not saying that lockdown or this pandemic may be the only reason you're going through something there might be other reasons but don't be surprised if Mm. your friends are not okay right now Because also psychologically, just like this is the low point for a lot of people, which is also why I thought it would be a good Mm. idea to do this episode now. So just like, yeah, please reach out and please get help because you are so worth it and you're so loved. Yes. That's it from me, guys. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a second to rate this podcast, write the review, and share it with your friends. Have a beautiful day, and remember that you are so loved.